Hello, I'm Melissa Wu from EXP Realty, and I'm we Gary. have Gary Chan from Gary Chan Mortgages from the bank, and we are going to start a series of episodes on mortgages and how you can utilize or get approval for mortgages and achieve your financial freedom. So we have our first episode today. So Gary, very important, you know, because the interest rate has increased and opportunities will be coming. But the first step as a buyer is to get pre-qualified. So number one, mortgage 101 on pre-approval. Yes. Pre-approving for a mortgage is very, very important when you actually need to purchase for a property. So I guess a lot of times when you're actually purchasing a property, you need to write subjects. Melissa, is that correct? Yes. And it's, you know, sometimes, you know, before you even take a buyer out, I would highly recommend they talk to a mortgage specialist first, because the worst thing to do is you look at a $2 million home, but you're only qualified for 1 million. You know, it would be such a waste of, you know, the buyer would feel very disappointed when they don't qualify. That's why it's important to get pre-qualified or pre-approval first. So what we're going to break down today, we're going to talk about documentation, right? So that's very interesting because a lot of people are like, what documents do we need for getting a mortgage from the bank or from any other lenders, right? That's very, very important. Second, we actually want to talk about the documentation after the documentation, how Fruin, do you actually want? Oh. So we want to talk about income planning, right? Yes, income planning is very, very important when we're actually trying to get a mortgage from the bank. Okay, so can we plan for income? Not really, but somehow we can. Okay, so because when we're actually planning for income, because it, when you're actually purchasing a property, I guess you actually give going through into different life stages. Sometimes when you're younger, you might want to purchase a one bedroom or maybe you want to buy a two bedroom later or you want to buy a townhouse or even like a detached home later on. So how do you plan your income accordingly to have to achieve what you want to purchase? So that's a very, very big topic. That's I always help my clients to achieve that as well too. So let's say when you are like when you just get into the um, employment market it's very easy because like you just get a job like you got pay stubs you don't have a lot of properties there's not much to plan so basically what you really need if you're actually employed by a company all you need is actually an employment letter and also the pay stub so that will actually show your income that you're actually getting from them right but in a lot of times that why do we have income planning because a lot of people because real estate market it's growing in vancouver and the price like it's going higher and higher sometimes and it's in a very very difficult market when you need to have higher income to qualify so some of my clients sometimes they only make maybe forty thousand or fifty thousand dollar income and then they realize that they actually have a few years of experience on doing in the same field they're actually not getting enough pay from the current employer they realize that like they can actually get higher income from another like company so I will actually do a little bit more income planning. The reason for that, because if they actually move to another industry, they might be getting $10,000 more. That affects your affordability a lot. So you mean like don't quit your job in the middle of trying to income plan? That's a very, very big question because it depends on the client situation. Let's say some of the clients, they recently get married and then they're a younger couple and they're having a baby already, right? Which is very, very important because they actually, before the baby, they actually want to have a new place to get ready for the new family. So in that case, then you actually want to do all the job switching, like higher income and all that before you actually having the new baby and welcoming newborn to your, to your family, right? So all that kind of like, it depends on the urgency, right? So let's say if you look at the property, some of the clients mix very, um, I would say emotional vibe, mm -hmm. right? They see a property that they like, they just want to get in. Right, so it's it's good because like you see what you like, and then like you can just purchase it, right? But some of the clients actually they take longer. Some of times like they look at the property. Some of the clients mix very um, I would say like emotional vibe, mm -hmm. right? They see a property that they like, they just want to get in, right? So it's it's good because like you see what you like, and then like you can just purchase it, right? But some of the clients actually they take longer. Some of times like they they want to see a lot more places. They might see like maybe 50 places or like 100 places before wow. they've actually made a move, right? Mm. So some people feel more, it really depends on your comfortable level, on your comfortable level. Is that correct? You know, um, so we were talking about it this morning. If you plan to buy a property as a agent, I normally would first send them to the bank. 
yes. right? Get pre-approval and then write down the, what are the most important needs and wants. You know, it comes when a client looks at 50 property, maybe they don't know what they want. So it's very important to, to sit down with them, find out what is important for them. If they're planning to have a, one baby, then how many bedrooms would you like? Are you working from home? Do you need an office, right? And first we need to find out what they qualify for and what is important for them. Is location important or are you working from home? So then we narrow down to, you know, certain properties that meet their needs and wants. Right. If you just look at everything, I'm curious to look at this. I'm curious to look at that. That's just doing market study. That's not really effective, like purchasing. Then they're just looking at properties, right? Yes. A lot of um. It's not like the, a lot of not not the normal purchasing process. Yes. A, a, a good consultation, but really write down what is very important for them. Like I need to have a walk kitchen. Yes. Right. Then we're not going to look at stuff that doesn't have a walk kitchen, and I really need to be in the school area then we're not going to look at anything else, right? We focus on what is most important for them. And then when new listings come up, we would be the first ones to go. But that's why it's very important to get pre-qualified. Yes. So when we're pre-qualifying the clients and then we just first want to take a look, is this your maximum purchasing power? So is that like we'll be able to switch jobs so that you can like get a higher income with the same industry? Because some of the industry, they actually have a high, like a longer probational period. So some of them, they're three months, some of them, they're six months, some of them, they're like over a year, right? So we have seen those before. So if you actually switch a job in the same industry, most likely it's going to be okay. But in we always want to actually see like a written like confirmation saying that like you're off probation and you are employed with a new company, then you'll be okay. Even though you have to pay that for three months already. So that is for somebody that's just starting out in their job. But I think a bank usually needs to look at two years, right? Two years income history. Well, two years income history will actually helps the bank to actually take a look into how the character of the client. So are they working in the same industry? Are they jumping from different jobs? That can actually affect because like, you know, uh, recently we have COVID time. Right. Right. It's very difficult for a lot of like industry as well too. So mm -hmm. some clients decided to we maybe like we want you want to move to a, a different industry. But mm -hmm. some of them they're doing really well. Some of them they're struggling. Mm -hmm. So that also tells because of your income. Let's say you were making like seventy thousand dollars per year last year, right? After you switch your industry, you're actually making less. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you make more, right? right? Because recently we have like um I, I have like a client. They were just in like selling coffee beans basically in a coffee shop, and then he actually switched it to a car sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, Big and difference. he's making double the income. Wow. Yes, because like in the reason the industry for um, used the car actually boom, right? Because um, there's I think there's a supply issue for newer cars. Right. And then like a lot of people going for used cars and it becomes like because of the inflation, I guess like everything become more expensive. It's a more better way to go with used the car. Mm. So in that sense, like it really depends on your own situation. However, there's actually some planning can be done around there. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I will say like documentation, income planning, it's very, very important for employed people. Okay, another thing is I have a, often I have buyers um, that get my inherited money or gifted money from parents or money that they have overseas and they're just moving the money here. So in those cases, how long does the money need to be in their bank account? That will be on our next episode. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. If you like our content, please subscribe, share, and comment. Any questions or comments, we love to hear from you. Just at the bottom, subscribe, like, and share.